I uh, wish that I could say that the folks that are ringing alarms about um, <clears throat> fatty liver are making it up, but they're not. It is another one of those um, rapidly growing epidemics that's uh, at this point, silent but uh, deadly. Um, <clears throat> it's rapidly becoming the number one cause of uh, of uh, liver transplant. It's associated very much with our um, growing epidemic of obesity and uh, diabetes. And uh, <clears throat> we have very few, if any, uh, significant drug treatments. Uh, there are some treatments, very, uh, very uh, effective, but they're not that easy. Um, there's a new type of uh, test for fatty liver, and um, <clears throat> it's inexpensive, um, safe. So there's a lot of a lot going on in the fatty liver area. So uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about that in just a minute. It, this is going to be a fairly long video. It's going to cover some of those some of those issues, then we'll do other videos later to talk about details around uh, fatty liver. But first, an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. This is uh, the prevention channel. We help, uh, help folks understand the science behind the things that are killing and disabling um, us in the U.S. and the world. <clears throat> so if you, if you go along the... Uh, if you walk through an airport these days, you see a lot of these CDC um, posters, and they're about hepatitis C, and they're saying, we got tested for hepatitis C, and they're saying, look, anybody born between, what is it, 45 and 65? Yes, 45 to 65, five times more likely to have hepatitis C. Uh, talk to your doc about getting tested for it. Well, <clears throat> why are they not talking about NASH, um, steatohepatitis, or fatty liver? <clears throat> That's actually a good question because uh, the inflammatory stage of fatty liver, or NASH, and I'll talk about, I'll, we'll define these a little bit later and talk about the progression of the disease. But it's now the number one indication for liver transplant in patients less than 50 years old. So why are they talking about hepatitis C and not NASH? They ha or fatty liver. They haven't really caught up with fatty liver, but they will. There's no question in my mind that they will. NASH, the uh, hepatitis, the inflammatory version of fatty liver, is the leading cause of liver transplant in women. Um, <clears throat> Again, we can go into deeper details on those later, but this helps this, this graph out of that article helps you understand a little bit more why they're so focused on hepatitis C. Hepatitis, uh, these are causes of uh, liver transplant, and this yellow line is hepatitis C. As you see, it was uh, high and growing rapidly in both men and women. And then all of a sudden, we stabilized it. Then all of a sudden, we're starting to get a decrease. With men, <clears throat> we're getting a significant increase in alcohol-related um, uh, hepatitis and need for transplant due to alcohol. But uh, with both men and women, you see um, <clears throat> Nash. Uh, the fatty liver related, and for women, it's growing very quickly and has now outpaced everything else. With men, it's now number two. So fatty liver is, is becoming a big, big deal. Now, what is fatty liver? Um, <clears throat> this will help you understand a little bit about the simple uh, components of it. This is a normal liver, and you see nice pink tissue here. Uh, the dark spots are the uh, the cell, uh, uh, the nucleus of the cell. In fatty liver, you begin to see these big white blobs, and that's fat. Now, in uh, and so that would be NAFLD, NAFLD, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Then you get progression of inflammation and fibrosis. 
You remember those terms. We talk about those quite a bit. Uh, once you start getting inflammation and fibrosis, you get uh, NASH or non-alcoholic uh, steatohepatitis. Now, again, as usual, don't let the big words throw you. Steato is just a Latin term or medical term for fat. And hepatitis, itis, is the term for inflammation. So you're starting, so <clears throat> something's happening, causing fat to build up. And then the fat, something's attacking the fat and starting to cause inflammation to build up. Then you can get progression on into, what, 2 to 3% into uh, actual hepa, uh, hepatic carcinoma. I'll go into that uh, again briefly here. Uh, NAFLD, remember just simple um, fatty liver disease. 80% of these folks will go on and, and not present anything else other than fatty liver. 20% will go in and, and become, their bodies will attack the fat in those liver cells. Um, <clears throat> for those folks that start to get hepatitis, then you start to get fibrosis and then advanced fibrosis. 5 to 10% will, will go on to develop that. And then even uh, liver, um, liver death, and hepatitis, uh, hepatic carcinoma. Um, so again, significant disease. Now what's the, here's one of the questions. What, what's the difference between these people that just go on, the 80% that go on and remain just fatty liver, and the others that go on to develop inflammation, cirrhosis, and even uh, hepatocarcinoma? There's, there are some genetic components to that. We'll mention those again a little bit uh, later. From a physician or a patient perspective, what's fatty liver look like? What does it feel like? What are the, uh, a soap note is what we, what the clinicians usually write out, subjective, objective assessment and plan. Um, <clears throat> subjective means what's, what's the history? What's the patient tell you? There are no symptoms. As I mentioned before, it's a silent disease. Um, and Alcohol is important in terms of any kind of fatty liver. In fact, up until the 90s, we used to think there was no other cause for fatty liver. And uh, I'll remind you, I was around practicing then, and I remember conversations where patients had uh, fatty liver and docs would say, yeah, we've got another patient denying the fact that they drink too much. Uh, now we know better. <clears throat> for men, and they've got a higher tolerance for alcohol, mostly because of weight. Uh, and it's, the cut point is 14 drinks per week. For women, it's seven drinks per week. Um, and again, obviously, you can get into further detail on that. I'm not going to do that in this video. Now, under the, so that's the history. Basically, no symptoms. Um, under objective, you'll, basically, this is related to type 2 diabetes and obesity. So you're going to see increased BMI, type 2 diabetes, now, clinically, uh, for the docs, uh, you will see some increase, maybe usually moderate increase of liver function tests, the transaminases. Um, the uh, ALT is usually a little bit higher than AST, um, which is the opposite of what you see, the pattern that you see with alcoholic uh, liver disease or alcoholic fatty liver. Now, <clears throat> in the past, up until very, very recently, all you had to confirm this was MRI which was very expensive and had a lot of radiation, and uh, liver biopsy, which obviously is a major problem as well. Now we have a thing called FibroScan. It's a $40 test uh, with uh, no radiation. So we've got major developments going on in the, devel in the assessment um, of fatty liver. So <clears throat> now let's go down to the plan. Uh, we mentioned there are very few meds. Again, we'll talk about those. The only one that's been shown to help so far in clinical trials is uh, liraglutide, Saxenda. Um, and it appears that it may be due to uh, weight loss. As you know, se uh, it's also, Victoza Saxenda is also called, uh, also has an indication for weight loss. It decreases gastric emptying. Um, <clears throat> but the other uh, uh, metformin, pioglitazone, haven't really been shown to be uh, huge uh, uh, improvements. 
again, we'll talk about those. Those are topics for other time periods. But for this video, the major plan is decrease that BMI. So decrease carbs, decrease calories, uh, increase fasting and exercise. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned fiber scan. Just briefly, we'll do a couple of pictures on that. It's a very simple, painless. It feels uh, about like somebody thumped you in the ribs with their finger. Uh, here's another picture. <clears throat> and again, it's ultrasound, so it's using sound waves, just like a sonar, uh, a submarine uses to find uh, other submarines, or ships use to find each other. Now, <clears throat> Are there other assessments that are going to be happening soon with, uh, with fatty liver? For sure. Uh, there's one thing called microRNA. And first of all, I'll show you that this is another really good um, transition of the stages of fatty liver. First, you've got steatosis, which is, again, remember that's, that just means fat. So first, you've got buildup of fat. Then you've got inflammation. That's the itis on the end. So steatohepatitis. And um, hepa obviously means liver. Normal liver, fatty liver, uh, fatty liver with inflammation. And then fatty liver with fibrosis and cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is just, just a, a serious form of fibrosis. And fibrosis is what happens after you get uh, inflammation. And this HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, again, these are the types of um, microRNAs uh, that are being uh, measured and seen to show patterns as we get into stages. So that's too, it's not ready for prime time yet, but we're going to be developing. There will be developments in this area. Uh, there will also be developments in terms of the genetics. For those of you who are biochemists and interested in the genetic pathways, and there's a lot of that on this channel. Um, as you actually, let me show you the next slide first. You start looking at what exactly causes uh, fatty liver disease, what, what creates the fat in there, and sure enough, there are a lot of enzymatic pathways which have become very much suspect in terms of causing fatty liver disease and. Um, and inflammation. They all focus around, guess what? Glucose pathways and, and insulin pathways. So <clears throat> again, something to be thinking about for the future in terms of how we manage uh, hepatitis. Here's going to be an, an ugly part. Um, this is the uh, rates of obesity and diabetes in this country according to the CDC. As you can see, they are growing. And sure enough, that's why um, this disease is growing. Getting closer to the ugly part, maybe that doesn't look too ugly. This is actually um, foie gras. And that's the French term for liver fat, so fatty liver. Uh, it's actually considered to be a, a dish. Most of you, or many of you have probably heard of it, foie gras. Um, and this is a appetizing looking preparation. I will warn you, the next couple of pictures do uh, show what many people would consider an animal cruelty. There's a lot of debate around this issue. It's how you get foie gras. The, they force feed geese with uh, corn, and that's what's going on here. So, uh, there's a reason that I'm going into this issue. My point, which you'll see in just a second, Again, a, a goose being force-fed corn. That corn is creating um, carbohydrates, um, the reactions that you might expect with the liver. This was the reason for going there. Uh, as you see, as we begin, we've got plenty of um, habits in our typical American diet where we are uh, stuffing ourselves just like we stuff geese, and we wonder why we get fatty liver. Again, there's a major focus on the fructose in corn, 
Again, that's corn that's being stuffed into that uh, goose's liver. And guess what? Go back and look at some of the, my videos on uh, fructose in, the, in soft drinks. And there's, it's not just carbs. It's not just fructose. Although those do appear to have a special place in the cause of this disease. It's overall calories too. Um, and the message here is obvious. You'd have to walk about seven hours to burn off a, the, just the calories themselves in a supersized Coke, French fries, and Big Mac. So again, <clears throat> fatty liver disease. You haven't heard much from it yet, but it's real and it's on the way. Thank you for your interest.